Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Sisram. It's time for more plane reviews. I'm still going through this crop that I've picked up from the Kerbal X, and uh, I'm hoping to go through them a bit quicker this time, so I'm going to go straight away into the K18 Cornet once it loads. Come on, load! Load! And this is by WhatGuy05, and it has little tweak-scaled little stock weaponry, which is pretty cool. And it's uh, designed, of course, to be like an F-18, F-A-18, and uh, I think it does a pretty good job of that. It looks pretty good. Let's give it a fly. All right, here we go. One, yep, one activates the afterburners. How convenient. All right, getting up off the ground, giving it a little barrel roll. Just as we finish pulling in the windows, I had to stop the barrel part of the barrel roll or else we would have crashed just then. Let's go ahead and fire. Oh, okay. Ooh, nice. They're all like individually staged. All right, let's pull up a bit. Fire that one. Fire that one. Fire that. Fire that. I like this. <laughs> lots and lots of rocket exhaust because, of course, the uh, tweak scale doesn't actually change the size of the effects. Let's see. Oh, nothing else. Oh, so we can't just drop these. We can't. I guess we don't have a stage set to drop them. We can just have to uh, manually. Oh, come on, come on, manually uh, decouple them. Dink. All right. And uh, this thing's going pretty darn fast, as would be expected with two Panther afterburning engines on there. I'm gonna go ahead and decouple the other. Come on, decouple the other fuel tank. I believe we've actually the Kerbal crash system. We've we've suffered damage somewhere. Oh, maybe it was just in those parts from the extreme maneuvering well maneuvering at extreme speeds while going very fast hold on nope okay I thought I saw something on the ground there and that was interesting that's interesting okay I see our shadow I see that all right I'm gonna pull up just a little bit so we don't crash oh look at that beautiful shadow very nice very nice to fly definitely deserving of the name k18 kegel kegel no not kegel what was that? Oh, no, Hornet. So it was Cornet. Gosh, why was I thinking Eagle? I was probably thinking about F-15s and how I made a plane that's somewhat similar to an F-15, which you should have seen by now. I believe I published that before. The uh, the last KSP video I did before this one was that video. The uh, XH WAP, which I think is a pretty cool thing. All right. Yes, very nice. Yes, 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 yes. Very much liking this. All right, so we're going to go on to the next one now. Next up is the K-16 Kalkin, also by what guy 5 and I think you can see a pattern going on here. In fact, I think, since I know for sure I have at least one more craft by him, I'm going to go ahead and get all the crafts by what guy 5 through with. The more of those uh, stock missiles using tweak scale, it's got the nice fuel tank underneath. Let's go ahead and fly it. And of course, I'm not sure yet, but I think this episode might be a shorter one, and... Uh, I'm sorry about that, but uh, hopefully hopefully you guys are okay with that. I don't know. I got I, I kind of asked about that, but didn't ask very much in the last episode. And I know I got one person at least who was like, oh, yeah, it's fine. You know, if it allows you to make more of them, making them shorter, that's fine. And uh, I hope the rest of you are okay with that. In fact, I hope I hope that maybe you might even like them being shorter. Oh, my God. Wow, this thing, the, the missiles, just crazy. Look at this. The sky is full of effects. Ah, yes. I love F-16s. I don't know if I've ever mentioned how much I love F-16s, but I really love F-16s, and uh, I think this replica does a pretty good job of doing that justice. I do like how you've actually gone through and made the uh, kind of... it just... it's very accurate. I like that. I like that very much. Of course, uh, I like things with smaller part count, but that's beside the point. That's just primarily because I don't have the best computer, unfortunately, and... Uh, can't really afford to get a new one, but I do have a Patreon. <clears throat> hint, hint. Just, just saying. Just saying. I'm sorry. But I felt like I should say it, especially because I don't mention it in my videos, and I really need to. I also really need to come up with, like, uh, things that make Patreon actually worthwhile and, like, revamp the page and do things better. One thing I was thinking of is actually uh, kind of giving... Uh, no offense, but giving preferential treatment to patrons. Like, basically, in plain reviews. Like, if you're a patron, then you message me, and your plane is, like, guaranteed next episode but then i'll make sure that for every patron craft i take ahead of like you know ahead of an, ev any other person i'll make sure i always have at least like a one-to-one -one ratio you know one patron craft one non-patron craft that way it doesn't feel too unfair because the last thing i want to do is you know make everything like pay, pay to you know what i mean it's just i it's free to you right now so i don't want to make it suck 
and make it like have to pay. I don't want to. I don't want to turn my videos into microtransactions. <laughs> to to put it that way. Oh, look at that. I flew right through where that building would have been. Oh, that's beautiful. All right. Yeah, this episode's going to be just what guy. And I say that purely because he sent in the Kegel. An F-15 Kegel. Yes. Or a K-15 Kegel. F-15 Eagle. Yes, the thing that I was just accidentally kind of indirectly mentioning. He sent one in. And that is cool. And I like it. And there's nothing in the description. But I'm pretty sure the action groups are listed on Kerbal X, yes they are, I just forget to check, or at least forgot to check until now, and I'm guessing the way I set up like a standard set of action groups for how like all my planes are similar, I'm guessing he's doing the same thing, basically because I noticed that like my planes, he puts the afterburners on action group 1, on everything that I've flown of his so far, so I'm guessing that's kind of a, uh, a standard thing he does, and I also noticed, because I actually bothered to remember to check this time, that this one has two as an action group for the drop tank. So there we go. I, uh, I threw the drop tank up. Up in the air. Ah, oh, yes. F-15. This is nice. Oh, yeah. I'm flying a big old heavy fighter. Apologies for the frame drops there. The, uh, the computer doesn't like doing all the effects and shooting those tiny stock missiles. It, it much prefers uh, BD Armory's weapons. And I noticed there are sometimes, like, some performance issues with, uh, whatchamacallit, with, uh, tweak-scaled stuff. Uh, at least for me there are. But then again, maybe that's just, a uh, correlation, because I tend to see, you know, those kinds of frame rate problems with things with a lot of parts, and things with a lot of parts tend to have a lot of tweak-scaled stuff. So, it may be, uh, it may be just a correlation and not actually causation, or it might not be, I don't know. And if you don't know the difference between correlation and causation, well, essentially, it's just correlation means these two things happen to be, appear to be related. And causation means one of these things causes the other. So, like, for instance, uh, this thing flies because it has wings. But I could say that uh, this has jet engines, therefore it flies. That's not true, because you, you could have other kinds of engines and have it still fly. Or something could even fly without engines, you know, for a time. So, yeah, I don't know why I bothered to try and explain logic stuff there, but... Uh, I don't know. I'm 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 feeling a bit like more hyper this time around. And hopefully that's a good thing. I want to have more energy in my videos. And I don't mean just energy by crashing into the ground, but you know, that that's cool too. That wasn't the coolest explosion. I mean, we got something skidding off. That's kind of cool, but you know. Yeah. I should probably fix those buildings at some point. And last but not yeast, or least, I don't know why I tried to make a pun there. This is the K-14 Comcat by, uh, what's guy? Oh, five. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, I'm so happy. The intakes are actually angled in properly. I love that. I'm sorry, I just, I love when I see the little attention to detail. Like, just, this is very accurate, and I like it very much. I just wish, uh, the, the wings were actually, you know... Uh, properly re re adjustable in flight. Obviously, he's done the same kind of thing that I did with uh, when I tried making one, which is to have it so that you have everything based on one part, so you can, in the VIB, rotate them and get the proper angles and have it both swept or not swept. But, uh, obviously you can't do it during flight. You know, I was just thinking of something. It'd be really cool if someone made a little- wow, did you see that? before the tweak scale applied, that was great, because I hit Control z to undo the uh, rotation I did there, and it did a funny. But, I was just thinking, you know what would be really cool? What if someone did like a, a simple robotics mod that essentially allowed you to, in flight, change, basically use these, um, uh, whatever they're called, these little things that let you rotate, you know, the little offset and adjustment tools, if someone made something where you could use those in flight. Imagine if you could use this in flight. Like, you know, obviously it would be very cheaty, or at least it could be used to be very cheaty. But for things like this, it would be very cool to be able to just, in the middle of flight, be like, let me just adjust that a bit. Or you could even imagine it from the perspective of stuff like uh, Kerbal Attachment System and the Kerbal Inventory System, where you can build stuff out in the field. Imagine if you also could tweak things a little bit out in the field. That would be very cool. I wish I had any idea of how to do something like that, because I would totally do it if I could. We're actually going to fly this first with the wings swept like this, just because I managed to do that just now. Also, I have to mention the Z-fighting, because I'm always, you know, annoyed by that. And, uh, obviously I have to continue to annoy people who are annoyed by me annoy being annoyed by that. I don't know where I was going with that. Alright, here we go. 
Fire everything. Fire something on the ground, because why not? That's just skidding along the ground. Let's fire another one. Oh, that one just imploded immediately. That's great. All right, getting off the ground. Pulling up just a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn off the afterburners. Let's hit space a couple more times. Oh, yeah, because it's space and not, like, a firing group, they are a little bit slower to fire. And pull up and drop the drop tanks. Pew. I'm sorry, I just like bombing with drop tanks because it makes no sense, but there you go. Beautiful. Oh, I didn't even notice until just now, but he has these in the inside right there. Very nice. Again, very accurate. Also, I believe I've done uh, some damage to my tanks there because of Kerbal Crash System and the way they don't leave the plane very cleanly. Oh god, we're gonna crash unless... nope, we're gonna crash. See, the thing is with the afterburners, you get a bit more turn authority and more speed, which more speed towards the ground, not always good, but when you also have more turn authority, I've noticed um, engaging afterburners when you're not sure if you can pull out of a loop can actually save you. In any case, going back to it before I swept the wings, I want to take a look at the indicators here and then take a look at the indicators as I sweep the wing and see how much further it goes back. Not by much, but a little bit. And get ready to see giant boosters. Huh, it didn't even listen to me hitting Control z Control z and Giant Boosters. <laughs> Alright, yeah, sorry, that just amuses me slightly. I'm actually going to accidentally hit the wrong button. I'm going to take these off, oops, at the decoupler, just so I can fly it without them, because I, the they, they, they lower part count, you know, shh, shh, sh it's, it's okay, it's okay. I just, I'm going to take those off, and I'm just going to give it another little quick fly like this. Alright, here goes. One thing, I'm going to see if it's... Not quite accurate, or if it is, I didn't pay too close attention to how the roll works. Okay, yeah, he's just using ailerons, which if you look into the actual F-14, that's not how it works. However, trying to make it work the way it actually works uh, doesn't work too well, and now I've said work too many times in one sentence, but I have done it. I need to actually make a video of that. I just, I haven't, I, I don't know why I never got around to it, but I actually have made an F-14, or at least something approaching an F-14 that has both the robotics, which did not go so well, and has the uh, ailerons working the way they're supposed to, or rather the spoilerons, since an F-14 actually uses something called a spoileron rather than an aileron. And I'm just going to drop those, pull out of this dive. Oh, I missed. I mean, I wasn't aiming, anything in per aiming for anything in particular, but... Uh, I was kind of hoping they would hit something and it'd be kind of funny, but in any case, very nice. I do like I do like the way what Guy 5 makes his replicas. Thank you very much for submitting them. And fuck. Hey, we survived. Thank God for Kerbal Crash System and glitchy glitchy camera views. All right, and because I felt bad for having this episode relying exclusively on older submissions and what Guy 5. This is an FA-18 Hornet by Oliverius156, and we're going to go ahead and give it a quick little fly. And with this, I will be done for this episode. So, thanks for watching. I clicked the wrong button on my other monitor, and your landing gear are far too back. Your landing gear are far too back. Okay, put them closer to the center of the mast so you can take off at a reasonable speed. That said... I may be saying that too soon. No, definitely, yeah, they're too far back. Look, I should have been in the air already, or at least crashing the engines into the ground. Am I gonna have to fall? I'm gonna have to fall off the end of the runway to get into the air. That's bad design, my friend. Also, your wings are flexing quite a lot. Wow, there's a lot of parts in there. I mean, it looks good on the ground, but obviously with the flex, it doesn't look so good. Um, so one thing I want to say is, uh, first of all, I mean, if you can, if you can get away with it, use less parts, but I can understand if you don't want to do that, and uh, obviously other people have better computers than I, but strut your wings, strut your wings, definitely strut your wings, because as you can see, this, it has a lot of flex, and I mean, unless you want it to flex, because I could see, you know, it does look cool, it's just, it also means that if I do something like this, that looks a bit ridiculous, although actually what I was trying to demonstrate there was it breaking, but uh, it didn't break. Also, another thing is, do you have every single surface on every single... Yeah, you do. Which, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with that, it just can look a little weird, and sometimes, or rather often, it looks better 
without doing that, although I have to say I am amused by the um, kind of swooping bird look this has. It also would definitely um, turn faster if you, oh dear, if you did some stuff like that. Damn. I hope we didn't need the uh, SPH. Because after that, we certainly aren't going to have it anymore. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in space.